Here's 10 things you need to know about the National Association of Realtors settlement that happened in March of 2024. Uh, This is really important if you've ever wanted to own a home, if you are middle class, or if you are poor. You're not going to hear these things compiled the way I've compiled them because this is a timeline of events, and I had made an initial video uh, reacting to this, but I had some fears that I mentioned in that video, suspicions that I think are pretty much confirmed here by uh, doing lots of research. That was really boring to do. Number one, Kenny Parcell, president of NAR, resigned in August 2023 after the New York Times reported that NAR employees accused him of sexual harassment. There's like 29 counts of him I guess, harassing people. A lot of it was hugs. Uh, There's lewd photos. I'm not here to defend him, uh, but the organization was clearly in chaos over this as of August 2023, which led to number two on our uh, list here, uh, which Tracy Casper was thrust into role as president of NAR. Hold on to that. We're going to go to number three. October 2023, following Tracy Casper being thrust into role as president. The Sitzer Burnett verdict. The case overview is basically Sitzer Burnett is a class action lawsuit that was filed in Missouri uh, federal court by a group of home sellers in the state against NAR and other defendants, uh, including Anywhere, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Keller Williams, and Remax. Uh, The plaintiffs claimed that real estate Commissions are too high. Uh, the NAR's Code of Ethics and MLS Handbook, along with their practices, uh, lead to inflated commission rates. I also watched a video on this YouTube channel called Halcyo that apparently is an app as well for real estate, uh, where they say the buyer's agents don't do anything. I've been a buyer's agent and a listing agent for 10 years, and buyer's agents do more work than list agents. I'm sorry to say. List agents are awesome. You do a great job, most of them. But buyer's agents uh, could be working with people for years. Whereas a list agent, you're probably working in this market for a couple days uh, and then you go under contract and it's about, you know, a month or so until you get to settlement. But buyer's agents in this market specifically, you could be working with people for years trying to win. You you might make 10 offers before you get a house because there's such low inventory. And uh, even when you find one you like, you're probably competing with about 10 different parties. I mean, if I had to guess the average, it'd probably be something around that. I could be in the most rural area in Pennsylvania where I work or in the city, and it's nearly the same at this point. You're... You do so much. You can be people's therapist through the transaction. You're really trying to keep them out of trouble and make sure that they don't get themselves into a situation that's going to blow up in a year or two. You want to make sure that they're set up for now and the future. And how do you do this? You have to do this every day. I study this stuff. I listen to people like Barry Habib. I watch Breaking Points. I I consume independent media that talks about the housing market because... Frankly, corporate media has been telling you that you can't buy a house forever. They don't want you to own a home. They do not want you to own a home. Corporations want to own the homes. That's what's going on right now. Corporations own the politicians. They own you. Number four, speaking of which, Michael Ketchmark, the lead attorney for the Sitzer Burnett case, he's a frequent donator to Democrat and Republican candidates. The uni party. And you know what? This settlement he got in October 2023 was a total of $1.8 billion. And he gets 33 to 40% commission on that. So uh, maybe his commission rate could be reduced a little bit. 33 to 40%. Realtors get anywhere from 2 to 3% commission per side. Like that's, I'm sorry, that's fair. Your house literally sells for more because you work with a realtor and you keep yourself from trying to strangle the person buying your home because there's that barrier. That's like why we're a thing. Aside from all the other reasons to have a realtor, one of the most important is to keep buyers and sellers, keep the peace. It's about a meeting of the minds. You're not, Halcio said in this video that I referenced that buyer's agents are against you. And they said that in some cases, 
I guess in this lawsuit, what was detailed is that a realtor came in and negotiated the price down. The buyer's agent negotiated the price down $10,000, and they still had to pay them a commission. Did they come in and like put a gun to your head and make you drop the price by $10,000? No. That happened because everybody agreed on it. It didn't happen because anybody forced you. That that has in ten years of doing this, I've never forced anybody to do anything. And saying that buyers and sellers are adversaries is that means you don't even get what's going on. Again, that is why we need realtors. It is not this isn't a competition against each other to see who can make out, you know, better at the end. We want everybody to be happy. That is the whole point meeting of the minds. Point number five, uh, in January 2024, Tracy Casper, who was the president of NAR following the resignation of Kenny Parcell, um, is blackmailed to step down from NAR. Tracy Casper was blackmailed to step down from NAR. So they had sexual harassment case with Kenny Parcell um, and then blackmail to Tracy Casper Kevin Sears is now the president of NAR. More on him later. Number six, March 2024, the NAR agrees to settlement terms, which are number seven, uh, July 1st, you're not allowed to advertise cooperative compensation on the multi-list. What does that mean? That means you are not offering a commission to a buyer's agent. Basically, you can pay a buyer's agent commission if you want as a seller, but from now on, they are basically saying that the sellers are not responsible for paying the person, the buyer's agent, who brought the customer to your house, gave you a whole bunch of money for your house, beat out 10 other people with this fantastic offer they made because that buyer's agent was working regularly in this market and knows what's going on, knows how to construct an offer. That's going to at least give you your best opportunity to win as a buyer, they're saying that uh, that cost could basically be offloaded to the buyer who's already paying money down. Everybody's different with what they want to put down. What they're able to put down usually determines how much money they put down. Closing costs are not this mysterious thing. That It is really easy to track closing costs. Uh, you have your Pennsylvania state transfer tax, which is 1% per side buyer and seller each pay one percent of the state transfer tax every settlement because the state wants a piece of the pie you have your taxes so the seller might have paid taxes uh, through whatever quarter the home is being purchased in they get reimbursed by the buyer for those taxes the buyer if you're getting a loan you have to pay your lender's fees you have to pay for title insurance you have to pay for settlement it's it's really like this is simple stuff. Nobody is hiding any cost from you, especially if you work with a good realtor and a good loan officer. They will spell that shit out for you so you can see line by line where your money's going. That's how this works. And they're saying that you need more cost on top of all that stuff. So typically people are paying about, I'd say like 10% of the purchase price if you're doing a conventional 5% down loan. Uh, with about 5% closing costs. It's probably somewhere around 10% of the purchase price, which is a lot. If you're telling me that it's a good idea for middle class and poor people to pay more than that, you are crazy. And you are. this is on purpose. It's an attack on these folks. And it's an attack on people like me, realtors who have built their business for years. I took 10 years to build my business. I'm in my 11th year now. And I'm really pissed off that nobody in our government, nobody really anywhere is standing up for realtors. NAR is clearly a captured agency. I, I'm going to say it now. They, they're not working for us. I'm paying them still. So I'm going to say what I want about it. And I would love to know what Kevin Sears thinks about this. Oh, funny. I do know what Kevin Sears thinks about this. Number eight, Joe Biden, our president, said for the first time ever, Americans can negotiate commission. Uh, this is false. Uh, Americans have been able to negotiate commission. I've negotiated commission with just about every person I've ever worked with. Uh, my friends who have worked with me uh, know it as the homie rate. Um, and the thing about the homie rate is uh, I want to get your business. I want you to work with me. Why? Because I want to make a living so I can pay for my house that I'm in right now. 
uh, so I can uh, continue being a musician uh, in a world where they've killed the option to make money off music for most musicians. You negotiate commission so you can get business. That's a fact. Joe Biden has been involved in the real estate market since the 70s. He's bought many homes and he knows this, but he wants to message to you that he's doing something about fair housing. Okay, he's, he's opening up, he's helping, this administration is expanding the opportunity for Americans to obtain housing. Well, that is a lie. This is going to make it harder. This is going to make it harder for you. More money at settlement is going to be harder. Two to three percent more on top of already paying around 10 percent to buy a home is a lot more. Here's what Kevin Sears and the NAR had to say about Joe Biden's comments. While the National Association of Realtors appreciates President Biden's continued focus on the affordable housing crisis, the president unfortunately repeated incorrect claims that the recently announced settlement agreement allows Americans to negotiate commissions for the first time. Commissions were already negotiable before this resolution was reached and will continue to be negotiable as they have. Let's see what else he said. NAR commends President Biden for recognizing the need to build a stronger housing supply, and we will continue to work with his administration and Congress, as well as in state houses across the country, to fight for policy proposals intended to make home ownership more affordable and accessible for all Americans. Well, then why are you guys allowing this to happen. This is, again, a direct assault on the middle class and poor. Why would they do this? Why would they do this? Huh. Oh, yeah. Number nine, the End Hedge Fund Control of American Homes Act of 2023. This act needs to be passed. Basically, what this bill would do is it would ban hedge funds from buying and owning single-family homes in the United States. This is the most important piece of legislation on the table right now. But where this comes into play here with Joe Biden's comments, and I'm not going to guess what's in somebody's head, but just listen to this. The bill would require hedge funds defined as corporations, partnerships, or real estate investment trusts to manage funds pooled from investors to sell off all the single-family homes they own over a 10-year period and eventually prohibit such companies from owning any single-family homes at all. Uh, during the decade-long phase-out period, the bill would impose stiff tax penalties with the proceeds reserved for down payment assistance for individuals looking to buy homes from corporate owners. Do you think these owners are going to want to pay commission to buyer's agents when they sell these homes off? No. No. They don't want to pay. They don't want to pay you because they want to liquidate their damages. That is what appears to be on the table here. Why else would they be trying to get rid of real estate commissions? Why else? It's not helping you. Cooperative compensation makes the whole process better. Having your own representative is great, but you're not being adversarial to the other party. That is literally the job of your realtor is to not be adversarial, but also to not collude. It's not like you're, the realtors are both buddies who are like, you know, talking in private about, you know, well, I'm going to do this. I think we can, you know, I think we can get the sales price down or the buyer's agent. I think I can get my people to come up. That's not, that's not what we do. What we do is, is say, okay, that's what you want. Let me go and see if my people are willing to do that. And then me and my clients have a conversation, a private conversation about whether or not we're willing to do that where I give them the pros and cons of all their options. Number 10, my last point, agency capture is a, like, that is our biggest problem in this country. Unfortunately, all the institutions that are supposed to work for you and we're supposed to trust, like the EPA, um, they are all failing us right now. And this is just another example. So. I, I don't want to have to make videos like this, but literally it seems like nobody in my local town knows about really important stuff that's going on regarding this. 
So I have to be a loud mouth and make sure that you know that you're being screwed. So maybe contact Governor Shapiro, contact our representatives, bombard their Instagrams, let them know you're not down with this. And if they have something to to say about it, I'd love to hear it. I would love to hear Kevin Sears uh, say why they think that it's okay for the President of the United States to lie to the people about commissions uh, being negotiable. That's that's a blatant lie from somebody who's purchased many homes. It's a lie. If you've purchased one home, you know. Um, so thank you for watching. I guess like what the fuck? I don't want to make these videos. Fuck this. Music. We're gonna talk about music after this. All right. Bye.